We like Comic Con. Occupy Comic Con! Yeah, we are the 99 nerds. 99 battles of nerd on the wall. And a couch. <laughs> the Couch of Doom 3.0, we are proud to report, it's dead, Jim. <laughs> it's dead. So, have you guys had fun? Yeah! So the whole, the new layout, it makes it like a totally different experience now. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, do you, you guys can... like it? Do you yeah. like this new layout? Is this the way you want to do it going forward? You know, last year and a couple of years before, um, there's a thing called con walk. And con walk is you can only step one inch at a time because there's too many other millions of people in front of you stepping one inch at a time. And then occasionally someone has like a freak out. And usually it's me. And everyone looks at that one person. The one person who's being squashed amongst 3,000 people in giant foam latex costumes with face paint all over them. The one person who sees anything wrong with that particular situation, everyone looks around and goes, <laughs> What is wrong with that man? You know, uh, you know, it, 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 just like uh, births and deaths and marriages and divorces, you know, Comic Cons can be very stressful. For instance, some of the folks that were sitting next to us in the hall didn't understand the Couch of Doom thing. Counselor Troy. <laughs> so, as, she's, as she is taking apart her booth, she finally gets a chance to look over at Bulk and Skull's booth, and it's something like this. And it's a pile of foam and wood. <laughs> With little, little tiny pieces of white foam wood. <laughs> and she can't, she can't help so because she's a tough chick. She's like, wait, 12? <laughs> and he said, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and she goes, no, what is wrong with you? And she was like legitimately offended because she thought that we were taking stuff that belonged to Jared and the people that put together the con and were just destroying it. Which we, we were, but don't worry, it's a rental. <laughs> it's fine. So I was trying to explain it. I'm like, no, 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 it's all part of the gag. It's part of the shtick. In fact, if we do not destroy it, they will probably not have us back next year. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> so get back to work, dog. Destroy your couch. But she was having none of it. So I had to go with hat in hand to Council Troy. Mike stand one doesn't have a label. <laughs> oh, there it is. Um, I'm very sorry. Uh, you have to understand, we were destroying nothing. Uh, they, they want us to do it. Oh, well, if that's the case, you should have told me. You know, so we always have to, to be good neighbors when we're at a convention, we have to introduce ourselves to whatever really famous actor is next to us. Just so that, in the interest of detente, just so, oh, thank you, just so that we warn them, you know? He's holding a water detonator. So we must also apologize to Walter Koenig a billion times. Yeah, and he is the coolest dude on the planet, and he said he told us some very funny jokes. So I worship Walter Koenig. He's awesome. And Buck Rogers hates Vulcan Skull. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Gil Gerard would like to stab me with a knife in an elevator every time he sees me. Yeah. Because, we, you know, Gil Gerard is, you know, Buck Rogers. So we were at a and you had... Uh, you had Paulie and me, and then Gil Gerard. So here's Gil Gerard. Oh, I'll be. Right. <laughs> That's Gil Gerard. I'm Paul Rogers here. <laughs> and then you had Steve Cordinas over here. But I don't like Buck Rogers anymore. <laughs> and you know, Star Trek, you know how cool Star Trek is that Bill Shatner hasn't ruined it? <laughs> That's how cool Star Trek is. Yeah, that was intimidating being 
next to the Star Trek folks. I mean, it really is. There's very few people that we, I don't say there's a few people that we geek out about, but I mean, yeah. but you see those guys are like, oh my God, I am next to Council Trek, just call me an asshole. <laughs> she didn't, by the way, I'm just saying. Yes, it was but she, she called by you a disgusting 12-year-old. <laughs> Which is she's right, it's just true. But she's a very sweet woman. So. We, we kissed and made up that. <laughs> So, you guys, it, this is our panel. There are many like it, but this one is ours. And so I wonder if you have any questions or any comments, critiques, or you want to bring some change. I have a few bucks in my pocket. Are we, do are we doing the line thing? They got to line up? I don't know, you don't have to line up. You, you can just shout it, ho holla back. Hey, Cookie, you can give me some wishes. Thank you very much. You are welcome. <laughs> that is not a question! Very much. He asked why he didn't get a, co a cookie. Random because acts. you're a bad boy. It's random acts of bakery. <laughs> yes, it's true. A few people got hot dogs this year. Green Ranger. Let's go. Why do you be stupid in the show? Is he what he asked? Bobby, why do you be stupid in the show? Well, because the. the because the characters were written around us, and we are stupid. <laughs> hey, back there! You! Me? Ha! <laughs> if you were transported to the Zoo Ranger universe, mm -hmm. what would your characters be up to? Say, what would our characters what? To who? I think we would be like dock workers who would always be running yeah. from the Dragon Zord emerging from the bay again. <laughs> With the other Japanese people. Some directors would let us ad lib, most would not, because like method acting, it tends to degenerate into a self indulgent festival of me, you know? The show's only 22 minutes, and I mean, you look at this guy sticking, I mean, here he, it's gonna be an hour and a half. Yeah, we have it, we have it, they, they call it making the day. You know, you have to shoot a certain amount of material, and that's why you kind of stay to the numbers just to get the stuff done, because in TV, you shoot so much material. But some of our favorite directors, like, knew what the shtick should be, they understood it, so. 
you know, uh, like Terry Link was actually yeah. really understood how it should be. There's some great directors. We were joking today about um, <clears throat> one of the action directors who also directed a little bit of Power Rangers Samurai. His, guy, his name is Isaac Florentine. He's a very, very good, funny Israeli guy, and he has a habit of repeating himself. So every time, okay, okay, buddy, buddy, ready, ready, okay, okay, action, whoop, action. <laughs> so it became such a trope and such a gag that for years we just called him Isaac Isaac. <laughs> And he, and he always, he's like, he looks at us like, why, why are you saying this? Why are you saying this? <laughs> <laughs> you with the head, you with the head. You think you're clever, don't you? <laughs> if you're that clever, you can count on one hand, on one hand, how many female characters there were on the show when I was there. Figure it out. It was Amy Jo, wasn't it? Amy Jo is not a character name, <laughs> sir. <laughs> so my favorite answer to that uh, in recent I was like, oh, is it Trini? Oh, is it Kimberly? Because no one ever thought of that. So I just say, I tell the truth. Mrs. Appleby. Yeah. She always wore big sundresses, totally could have happened. still are not interested in that because no because you know if you you know it's like Hillary Clinton <laughs> climbing Mount Everest Sir Edmund Hillary Clinton if there's no objective then there's no mission and so for our characters there was always the quest to find out who they were or to unmask them or to figure out, you know, what the deal is with UFOs or, you know? So, it, it, so the, the quest is, is always there for us and, and if you pay it off, then it just, there's nowhere to go with it. Plus, then I would get canned after one season like everyone else. <laughs> and, it, and instead, I was on 11 seasons of Power Rangers. Jason Narvey. <laughs> Mine's called Paul Schreier. Although, although you know everybody gets tired, right? And you know you've all spent time with us this weekend. We are not sitting at a table, you know, not looking up at you. You know, we're engaging with you. We're hanging out with you. We're, you know, getting. We're going to jail with you in some cases. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's far more, it's far easier, I think, to have more energy. If you're gonna have long days, break it enjoy it, you know? And that's, and that's the way we were on set too. So, I mean, you, you guys know Vulcan Skull because you know us, and you know us because you know Vulcan Skull. And so, but everyone gets tired. So there's a moment in the day where there's this kind of Charles Manson laugh that comes out of Jason, where he goes, <laughs> and, I, and I know this sound. And that sound means I need an espresso or a sandwich stat. <laughs> or shit's gonna deteriorate. I mean, well, stop, he sorry. Got, he got really good at it, like, not even having to wait for the noise, you know? I mean, the noise is good because normally I would be standing right behind him, so all he'd have to go on is... But now he can look at me now and be like... <laughs> Darby needs food. <laughs> And I'm always right. Yeah. He knows it before I do. How freaky is that? And I generally, I have a longer gas tank than Narvi does, or a bigger one, clearly, with the caboose. 
So I think I could probably use a good desert island plane crash or Arctic misadventure. You know, it's kind of a uh, isolation diet. <laughs> Stranded in the Arctic. Dot com. It's my new website. <laughs> Let's go to this side. You guys want to type in? No, no thanks. I'm on my way to type 2 diabetes just fine. I'm in. That was really considerate of you. That's true, they were good. Uh, I like Attack of the 60 Foot Bulk. That's from the director. That's ironic. Ironically titled. Um, after I went back to school, uh, well, um, recently, uh, I'll take one. Uh, that I, uh, first time we did Lexington, one of the reasons I was, um, while I was down here, I took advantage to uh, do a theater festival in Louisville, Kentucky called uh, Mother Lodge. Which might be going on this week. You guys know Mother Lodge. There you go. It was the first time they did it. Uh, and I was working on a Hamlet adaptation, a bluegrass Hamlet adaptation. Wait a minute, wait, wait. Say that again? A bluegrass adaptation of Hamlet. How, how, did, how did that sound? <laughs> it sounded like this. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> but that was one of my favorites. It was, it was, it was Shakespeare, there's American Roots music, and we got a great band, uh, Slow Charleston, that played with us. And we even had a guy that uh, recorded uh, on Johnny Cash's last album, Prince uh, Bonnie. Uh, 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 Prince Bonnie, awesome. yeah. Will Oldham, his name is. So did you do, like, heavy vocal affectations to kind of do the bluegrass thing? Like, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, because, you know, the, the, the theory is that uh, the, the Elizabethan accent wasn't terribly different from an American Southern accent. Really? Yeah, actually, that's the truth. Did any of you know that? There's a place. There's a place off off uh, in, in, off the coast of Virginia and North Carolina called Smith Island and uh, all all those islands up there. So instead of Downton Abbey, it would actually sound like an episode of Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that Hamlet! Yeah. <laughs> that's how Hamlet ended originally. Very strange. <laughs> Boys. <laughs> Yo. Oh no, I'll tell you right now, he can't do it. Yeah. He can't do it because it's he's uh no, I don't think he, I can't do it. I don't think so, because he's been talking for two days and it requires um a, a a device that connects to a certain part of your body. That is a, it's a cranker. No way he's able to. Yeah, no. No, I can't do it. I can't pull it off. Even he go on a good day. It was but like, you're right can, now. can you do it? No. <laughs> hey, can you do this thing for me? I know it's really difficult. I mean, anyone can do it. Come on, why don't you just do it? Just do, you it. Know, Come on, you just do it. Generally, when you when you ask people to do things, it's because you secretly have a talent for doing it that you've been harboring for the last 20 years. <laughs> and, when, and when you don't have an ability, you don't you avoid that topic. Like, for me, that's like, you know, pull-ups. <laughs> pull-ups never come up in my daily, you know, life. I just avoid it. Next! Uh, what were your favorite pranks, either on each other or the other rangers on set? Well, we worked so many days in a row that we decided to paint a tropical scene in the talent hallway at Power Rangers stages with Sharpie markers, like a trop yeah. a tropical trees and a hammock. No, wasn't it in the bathroom? No, it was in the town hallway. It was like the long white hallway where everyone's dressing rooms were. Right, and, and, and it really did give us a feeling of escape. <laughs> Until like two hours later, a PA shows up with a gallon of white paint and two paintbrushes and says, Chaim says, fix it. <laughs> it's a short vacation. Never say never. Yeah. 
What do we say, Deborah? You know, Power Rangers like the CIA just when you think you don't have to assassinate people's jokes anymore. Um, they call you and they reactivate you or they turn the chip on in your neck or whatever. So. <laughs> I would love to do a spin off of Mighty Morphin. You know, I love our characters, and, and I, I would never, I would never not consider it. But Jason and I have spent a long time developing a careers that we love, and you know, we, we get to do art every day in our regular lives, and we make way more money than we ever did acting. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we go over this side now, and then we'll get back to it. Uh, I just wanted to know, what did you guys think in uh, Forever Red? for Skull, because Skull was still on Earth! <laughs> I, I, I was like basking on a beach in Miranoi, on Miranoi somewhere, I, you know. What I loved about that, actually, here's a great thing, so, um, as, as we've said before, I, I left the show to go to college, and then changed my life. Uh, as soon as I graduated from college, my very first job, was that cameo on Power Rangers? <laughs> that payday did not pay for my student loan checks. So, boy, did it ever not. <laughs> uh, there was a guy over here that could get you back. There you are. Um, on the note of the spinoff, so they turned back to the monkeys because they were fighting to do the whole thing. Correct. They were. How much pre production was done for the spinoff, if any? How involved were you? And Monkey ADR. <laughs> well, I liked Monkey ADR because I didn't have to get cakes in the face. I liked Monkey Town. Monkey Town was awesome for me because I was directing the show. So I was getting paid to be an actor and, and, and a monkey and, and direct, and that was awesome. Um, you know, the, the, that whole monkey, the monkey time, we call it. Um, I loved it because we were able to travel and go do stuff because we didn't have to be on standby for 14 hours a day. Well, that's when we, we did Hamlet the second, third time. We, did, we were doing Hamlet in the meantime. So I, I love this. Of them. A couple of them. So I love this story. Uh, I had a, a statue at the time that I bought and I thought it was really funny when I first bought it because it's, it's a stack of books and sitting on top of the books is a monkey doing this, looking at a skull just like Hamlet. <laughs> and I, I bought it, like, oh, we got money, that is a bad money. And then there's Paul and I reversing Hamlet and going in and doing ADR with a bunch of monkeys, and I say, that, that damn statue's got to go. <laughs> I remember that statue very well. I think I broke it, actually, at one point. I was like, whoops. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure some of you guys, you know, work at, in, a, in an office environment or something where you have a computer, right? Well, you know, the only way to really get a new computer at work is to accidentally dump a Coke in it. <laughs> I don't, sorry boss, but Dell is, it's, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think there's a downside to the throwing up to begin with. You know, all I've got to do is drink all this Epicac, and that Epicac... <laughs> it's like saying my name. That's true, you get, I get out of work too. But then you don't get paid, that doesn't make no sense. I, I, I have some advice for you, get a different job. <laughs> you know, if you lose an arm in the, uh, the hay baler, you don't have to bail hay anymore. You guys know what it's like when you vomit in a car, it never goes away, <laughs> ever. And then the summertime comes in, you remember it again. Given recent events and reboots and fan films, um, you know, I think I think it's a really wonderful opportunity for them to do some really cool stuff with it. Um, but it's Hollywood, remember? Nothing. It might never come to fruition. Yeah. So, uh, you know, honestly, I'd rather them not do it than do it badly. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I mean, think about how everyone jokes about how bad Indiana Jones was because they brought. Shut up. <laughs> 
the reboot. The new version. It was just a bunch of cameos of people, so that, that as you watch the movie, you're like, it's Indiana Jones. Hey, it's that guy! That was that other version of Indiana Jones. It's aliens. Hey, it's the other person. They survived the nuclear blast and refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. Well, I have postulated the answer to that question myself. Yeah. And I actually, I made a short little poly film called Revelation. And it's on a YouTube account. Check it out. It's fun. Okay. <laughs> it, was actually, it was actually to promote uh, Lexicon. Oh, that's right. That's right. I have a, I, I have a ballistic re-entry into the atmosphere. <laughs> Literally. Well, you know, when you have enough formaldehyde in a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look really beautiful too. And you know, some people, some some women are born great. Some achieve greatness. And other women have greatness thrust upon them. <laughs> Now, some of us are really, we're blessed with, you know, a little bit of baby fat. I don't know. You know, I mean, some people are born with, like, resting bee face, right? But they're, but they're totally happy. Yeah. And, and they become even more unhappy looking because 10,000 people in their lives have asked them, are you mad? <laughs> no. <laughs> Me, it's the opposite. I'm yeah. telling you, if you do, honestly, the secret to, to youth, if, if you can even call us that, um, is that you gotta love what you do. And if you're not doing something you love, you better find something you do love. And then you'll never age. I mean, not entirely, I mean, you know. But seriously, you know, if you, if you lead a life that is, you, you think is fulfilling and it's happy, you don't have to be rich, you don't have to be famous, you don't have to, you know, and, really. And wear sunscreen. And wear lots of sunscreen. Wear sunscreen. So whatever you do, as long as you can afford sunscreen, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I gotta get some sunscreen, man. I need it. Oh, man, I guess I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go steal my brother's DVD so I can buy some sunscreen. <laughs> uh, yeah, you. With your energy, Vulcan spills energy. If you were to land on a question or somehow get to a question that would help fulfill it, do you think that water would help you live forever? If we get to where? <laughs> still be on the air by then, too. <laughs> That's really funny. It's a good thought. Did, uh, did the continuity problems in the show uh, ever just show your guys' mind where it's like, wait? No, because it's like living in an abusive household. <laughs> you learn to deal with it. guy. <laughs> Mr. Vanderbeek spent a lot of money and time to get that cease and desist letter. A lot of money, a lot of time. Next. That's it? Oh, good. We get... Wait, wait in the back. Like, like, Tie-dye happy guy. Oh. What's up? Chance. What's up? What's up? What's up? All right, so what would happen if Vulcan Skull met Combat Chopper from Mass Rider? All right. One person. That's all. <laughs> that right there is the reason we were canceled. That's the only person who ever heard of that. <laughs> I, I think the answer is like the bike and skull would have like a like a moment, and and I would just be looking around to see where I'm gonna have to sit <laughs> again. It's like all right, let's move ball. Get on. <laughs> all right, let's all get on me. Get on me. <laughs> you know when they had us driving around that motorcycle? I mean. I, is it funnier to have the fat guy in the sidecar? <laughs> yes, it's hysterical. Because to me, it just seems dangerous. 
Because, listen, seriously, you guys, you can turn left all day long, totally stable. Try turning right. killed me like four times on that thing. Do you remember well, actually with how it turned out that you ended up, I ended up driving? Do you remember this? Yes. <laughs> May I tell them? Yes. Okay, so our first day where we had the thing, they're like, here's the side car. They made us both get motorcycle licenses. They went, Paul driving. Very first shot, they're like, the ones that come to the parking lot, Paul, Paul knew how to drive a, a motorcycle way before I ever did. And they're like, no, 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 we need you to tear into it. And Paulie's like, okay. Whoa! And he goes up. He, Flashes around the corner and I go up on the curb. Come on! Boom! <laughs> Ollie's like, got it in one. And I get off the motorcycle, Paulie. No, are you driving? <laughs> so, in, in his defense, it was because he knew what he was doing that he almost killed me. <laughs> yeah, it's okay if you're turning left. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> PhD. Uh, you know, I, I just call it poofed. <laughs> the, the HD stands for hearing device. Right. <laughs> it's a personal hearing device. PhD. <laughs> Pre hearing device. So I love that uh, that leather tanker's cap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was total Army Navy surplus buy from Supply Sergeant and. Uh, and that, that, like, I killed like several of them and I never, I never got one off the show. Uh, yeah. So I wish I had that. That was fun. Uh, I think my favorite thing, actually, there's a couple. I mean, I do, I do have one full, like, the action figure skull. I do have that costume. And I do have uh, the, the blue coat that the skull wore on camera for um, the movie that you barely ever even saw because everything was edited out. But I think my favorite piece, actually, because I'm a big, like, history buff, um, was the coat that I had for Doc Skullovich. That was my favorite one. We had a lot, like, half that stuff was my own wardrobe anyway, um, but they never let me have it. And then they just sold it in front of me. They're like, Darby, did you, want, did you want this? Here's the man that just purchased it, so. <laughs> I mean, usually all, on TV shows, the wardrobe just gets, like, hung up on racks and gets sold. Yeah. You know, they sell it in bulk, too, out of the closet or something like that. No, no, that, no. No, that was Australian stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, I have the eye patch for when I bulk. I have the glasses and the hood for the incredible bulkster. I actually have one piece of, of costume for each one of the original Rangers, with the exception, I think, of Austin. So I've got um, Billy's blue jumpsuit. I've got one of Zach's horrible 90s, like, like Fiesta Bowl shirts. <laughs> Racism. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah, I was wondering, um, during that episode of Wearing the Green Sequence, when they asked you uh, to uh, say Orphan Ride, and I have to say, uh, Burger Store, Burger Store, Burger Store, what was your reaction? <laughs> you, you mean to that dialogue? Yeah. When we first read the script? Yeah, when you read that, yes, really. Uh, well, I mean, they told us initially that we were going to get to do a morphing sequence, which we thought was cool. And then we saw the costume designs, and we thought it was cooler. So, you know, that's, that's cool. Actually, we had a lot of input on those costume designs, actually. Yeah. You, you used to have the costume designs up on our dressing room wall. Yeah. yeah. So. I told them I wanted a hot dog phone and an and a onion ring radar <laughs> and, a, and a pizza belt buckle. <laughs> And Mark Richardson, the prop master, he nailed, he did everything I asked for, little lights, and it was awesome. Was you know, usually with Bulk and Skull, there's not a lot of time. You know, like anytime you see us enter dressed as bunny rabbits or something, you know that costume is barely put together, and there's pins still in it, because they have so much stuff to make for us that they didn't often get the stuff done in time, so those costumes were fun. Well, and most Bulk and Skull stuff had to be done in, uh, tr not triplicate, but they needed like four or five because we're gonna destroy the cakes. The cakes yeah. and stuff is gonna fall on so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, you know about the Burger Morphers now in Ninja Turtles. Uh, no. There's going to be a Burger 
Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I think we were talking about this weekend. Well, this is. And they have burger morphers. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Sings uh, songs of love.
jobs in general that you love but no one asks you about? I've been talking to you. Uh, well, uh, Narvi and I did a production of Mice and Men. Oh, yeah, that's right. Guess which one I was. <laughs> George. Wally. Who? Uh, sorry, George. Who? <laughs> Lenny, if you just look out right over there. Uh -huh. Look across, look across the way. Okay. <laughs> It'll be just beautiful. <laughs> and every night, Paul and I and he looks across the way, and he just does this at the last minute, going, like, so what did we do last minute? So, look across the way, it'll be beautiful. <laughs> Resisting CIA torture. Where well, he's like, look at me. in a really historic um, home up in uh, the Conejo Valley. Yeah. The Jams family house. house. Yeah. Or ranch house kind of thing. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, there's, there's the kids over here actually had a question. They just want to know when this is going to be over. <laughs> Soon. Never. We want to know uh, if you're all going to do another show. We're doing one right now, bro. Yeah. For you. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of really good entertaining comedy out there. Yeah, and you guys are living it yourselves. There you go. Crazy Tony <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> Over there. You guys were able to work on any project that is airing on TV or movie-wise. What would it be and why? Oh, that's a good one. You know, like, um, just like Arrow, Flash, and a lot of the gold really um, I think it'd be funny if we were on one of those Real Housewives show. <laughs> you know, all the other chicks like, you know, and then it, it, it pans over there's Polly and me in dresses. <laughs> yeah, I hate my husband too. <laughs> Cheating on him, you know me. But he got all this. Like, how do you not? Ladies, we should have a sleepover. I mean, <clears throat> we should have a sleepover. <laughs> Like National Geographic, wouldn't it? <laughs> the majestic lion, 30 yards away, 20 yards away, 10 yards away, something. <laughs> All right, guys, I don't want to cut you short, but we got time for maybe one more question. You guys, um, we'll, oh, go on, man. Talk it. If you guys could be in uh, any other, like, Iron Man, what movie would you guys choose? Nah. I was in all of them pretty much, so. <laughs> <laughs> what was the car? Hey, guys, I love the show. I think the show's cool. I had a great experience. It was awesome. And I got to meet all of you and, you know, see you guys grow up and get jobs and become bartenders. <laughs> You know, and there's, there's, um, you know, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to party like a rock star, <laughs> did it ever happen? Yeah. LexCon only exists because of you guys. So thank you for having us.